Hello and welcome to the world of stories. I'm sure you're here for a bedtime story to help you drift into sleep. And so, let's begin. A soldier came marching down the road. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Good morning, sir. Croaked an ugly witch sitting at the roadside. If you do as I say, I will make you very rich. You see the huge tree there? The witch pointed over to an old oak. It is quite hollow. You must climb to the top, wriggle through a hole, and then lower yourself down the inside of the trunk, all the way to the bottom. You will see three doors. Open the first one, and you will find yourself inside a room where a frightening dog sits on a box full of money. Spread my blue and white checked apron on the floor, put the dog onto it, and he won't bother you at all. Then you can open the box and take out as much money as you can carry. In this first room, the money will be copper. If you'd rather have silver, you must face the even scarier dog in the second room. If you prefer gold, you must go into the third room. But there, the dog is yet more terrifying. What do you want for yourself? The soldier grinned. I don't want a single coin of the money. The witch cackled. Just bring me a rusty old tinder box that my granny forgot last time she was in there. Very well, agreed the soldier, and the witch gave him her apron. Then the soldier shimmied up the outside of the old oak tree, wriggled through the hole, and lowered himself down, down, down the inside. He found himself in a long corridor lit by one hundred burning lanterns, and sure enough, there were three doors in front of him. The soldier bravely put his hand on the first doorknob and turned it. "Great Scott!" he cried, springing back in alarm. There, in the middle of the room, was a dog with eyes the size of teacups. The soldier tore his eyes away from its staring gaze, laid the witch's apron on the floor, and lifted the dog onto it. Then he unlocked the box the dog had been sitting on. Amazing! It was filled to the brim with shining copper coins. The soldier gleefully grabbed huge handfuls and stuffed them into his knapsack, his pockets, and even his boots. The second dog couldn't possibly have eyes bigger than that last one. The soldier thought to himself. Boldly, he walked to the second doorknob and turned it. Good Lord! He yelled. There, in the middle of the room, was a dog with eyes the size of mill wheels. Round and round and round they turned. It made you dizzy just to look at them. Once again, the soldier forced himself to look away. He laid the witch's apron down, heaped the dog onto it, and unlocked the box on which it had been sitting. Fantastic! There before him was a treasure trove of silver. The soldier got rid of all the copper coins quick as quick, and filled his knapsack, pockets, and boots. Surely the third dog's eyes can't be any bigger than that, the soldier said to himself. Laughing at his good luck, he went to the third doorknob and turned it. Heavens above! He cried. The third dog had eyes the size of the round tower of the city of Copenhagen. Not only that, but they whizzed and whizzed around in his head like Catherine wheels. It was several minutes before the soldier found he could look at something other than the dog's enormous spinning eyeballs. Then he laid down the witch's apron, howled the dog onto it. And unlocked the box it had been sitting on. Unbelievable! There was enough gold to buy the palace of the king of Denmark himself. Chortling with joy, the soldier emptied his knapsack, pockets, and boots of every single last silver coin, and crammed them with gold instead. He hurried off down the corridor, found the tinder box, and then climbed up, 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 and out of the tree. Where is my tinder box then? The witch cackled. Tell me why you want it so badly, and I will give it to you," replied the soldier firmly. "Where is it?" the witch shrieked in annoyance. "If you don't tell me why you want it, I will cut off your head," insisted the soldier. "Give me my tinder box!" the witch howled in frustration. "Very well," said the soldier, and he drew his sword and cut off the witch's head. Then he went on his merry way down the road, with his knapsack. Pockets and boots weighed down with gold, 
and the witch's tinderbox tucked safely inside his jacket. At the very next town, the soldier booked into the best hotel, ate in the most expensive restaurant, and went to the most exclusive shop to buy himself new clothes. At once, the soldier found he had a lot of new friends, and they told him of all the wonders to be seen in the town, particularly the beautiful princess who lived in the castle on the top of the hills. How can I get to see this princess? the soldier asked. You can't, his new friends explained. No one can, for it has been prophesied that she will one day marry a common soldier, and the king and queen keep the princess locked up so this can never happen. Day after day, the soldier spent his gold on the finest things money could buy for himself and his friends. It was a horrible shock when he went one morning to fill his pockets and found that all the gold was gone. Suddenly, the soldier's friends disappeared. The soldier had to move out of the grand hotel and into a dingy attic at the top of 14 flights of stairs. He didn't even have enough money for a candle to cheer things up with a bit of light. Then the soldier remembered the witch's tinderbox. Surely he could use that to give himself a few sparks to start a warm fire. No sooner had the soldier struck the tinderbox once with the flint than there was a flash of lightning and the dog with eyes the size of teacups appeared. What is your command, sir? The dog growled, bowing his head respectfully. Once the soldier had got over the shock, he stammered, uh, Well, I suppose I'd really like you to get me some money. The dog immediately vanished, but reappeared an instant later with a purse of money clamped between his jaws. The soldier whooped and danced about with delight. Suddenly, he understood the secret of the tinderbox. Strike it once, twice or three times, and the dog from the first, second or third room appeared to grant his wishes. Soon the soldier was richer than ever. He moved back into the Grand Hotel, ate at an expensive restaurant once again, bought himself new suits of fine clothes, and found himself surrounded by friends once more. He had everything he could wish for, except for a wife to share it all with. That princess must be very bored locked up there in the castle. The soldier thought to himself. The soldier waited till it was dark, then struck the tinderbox once. In a flash, the dog with the eyes of teacups appeared. I would like to see the beautiful princess, the soldier said. Before he could blink, the dog ran off and then reappeared with the princess lying on his broad back, fast asleep. She was indeed very beautiful, and the soldier couldn't resist bending over to give her a kiss. The dog then disappeared and the princess was gone. Next morning, up in the castle on the hill, the princess remembered what had happened as if it had been a strange dream, and she told her mother and father all about it. The king and queen were deeply worried. The clever queen sewed a pretty silk bag, filled it with flour, and tied it around her daughter's neck when she went to bed. Then the queen pierced a tiny hole in the bag, tucked the princess in, and kissed her goodnight. Of course, the soldier had fallen deeply in love with the princess, and that night he sent the dog to fetch her again. Neither the dog nor the soldier noticed the thin line of flour that ran down from the silk bag and left a telltale trail all the way from the castle to his door. And in the morning, when the princess was safely back in her bed, the soldier was woken by royal officers breaking down his door. They grabbed him and dragged him away to be hanged. A huge crowd of townspeople had gathered to watch the soldier die, and opposite the gallows sat the smug king and queen and all the members of the town council. Just as the tagman put the noose around the soldier's neck, the desperate man had an idea. Will you grant me one last wish? He yelled out to the king. I would like to smoke a pipe of tobacco before I die. The king thought for a moment. He didn't want to seem merciless in front of all the people, so... Very well, he said. To the soldier's great delight, the hangman untied his hands and offered him a pipe and some matches. Oh, don't worry, the soldier grinned. I have my own light. And he pulled out his tinderbox and struck it three times. At once, the dog with the eyes as big as teacups, the dog with the eyes as big as mill wheels, and the dog with the eyes as big as the round tower of the city of Copenhagen stood before him. Save me, the soldier cried or I will surely die. 
The dogs growled like rumbling thunder and sprang among the crowd, scattering them and everywhere in terror. They made straight for the queen and king and the table of town councillors. One by one, the dogs picked them up in their jaw and hurled them far, far away over the most distant hills. Hooray! The townspeople cried. We never liked them anyway. We'd much prefer the brave soldier to be our king and the beautiful princess to be our queen. And that's exactly what happened. They were married straight away, and the three dogs were guests of honor at the wedding feast. That's it for tonight. Thank you for listening. Have a great night. Please like and subscribe if you like my contents. I shall update daily and continue with my best efforts. Good night.